Hey everybody, uh, this is I feel like kind of a long overdue video that I just wanted to throw up, basically running through the studio here, um, and I kind of want to start with the main area where I do, you know, all my recording, editing, monitoring, and just kind of break down different sections of the studio so you can kind of get an idea of what I'm, I'm working with here. and. And how with a fairly small rig, you can get some pretty great sounds. Um, so, first of all, I wanted to start with uh, the interface I'm using. This is an Apollo X8P. This has eight preamps in it. Um, I've actually never even used the preamps because I have these eight channels. Um, I have heard that they're incredible. I've just never used them because I have these. So, what are these? This is a BAE 1073 MPF. So I have four channels of that. Those are incredible. That's usually what I'm going through. It's a very clean, just very nice, warm sound. Uh, then I have four channels, the API uh, 3124V down here. That's also great. Uh, you can really control the gain stage on that uh, to get something kind of crunchier and dirtier or very clean with a ton of gain. Um, so those are the preamps that I use all of the time, that's it. I have a two channel uh, API 5500 EQ. That is what I usually run my overheads with if I do stereo overheads. So I can really sculpt the sound depending on the microphone I'm using. A lot of you probably know I use either stereo overheads and kick or mono overhead and kick. And if I'm just doing two mics, I'll do overhead on this EQ and kick drum will get this EQ. And a lot of the times that's kind of all you need. Um, if you're doing a recording for somebody and they want a microphone all over the place, that's a different story. Then I'll probably start to use some plugins or I'll just send them the raw files and they can adjust it however they want uh, on the back end. So that's the gear that I'm running my stuff through. Um, oh, I also have the UAD2 satellite up here that came with this uh, when I got it. I'm obviously using this 27-inch uh, iMac that has been a champion, knock on wood, for a long time. Um, these monitors are incredible. These are the Adams three-way. I think it's the 8 S8P, something like that. I forget the name. But this is a three-way mo uh, Adams monitor that's powered. That is absolutely bonkers how great they sound. Um, really, really impressed with those. Um, I had to rearrange where I sit in the room. I now sit kind of back here when I'm mixing. So these are supposed to be at least six feet apart which is they are exactly six feet apart, and then you should be about six feet out for your, uh, for your angle for listening. Um, I also have a pullout um, Arturia uh, Keylab 88 Mark II keyboard here. This is where I recorded my last record. Um, used this for a lot of the stuff. Some people were wondering what the piano was on my last record, Travelers. I recorded all the piano stuff on this with a really amazing Spitfire piano plug-in that sounds incredible. I have an upright piano upstairs that's out of tune. I couldn't really use it. I used this and it was really amazing to use. So shout out to Arturia Labs, or, or sorry, Arturia for the Key Lab 88. This thing is incredible. Weighted, uh, feels amazing. Um, so that's pretty much this zone. Uh, this backdrop here that looks kind of like marble is done by Audimute. I'm sure you guys have heard me talk about Audimute. This whole room is treated with Audimute. This was kind of a marble uh, finish that I really liked that I put up with the little black strips in between to break it up. Um, so that's it for my desk. Uh, let's move over to maybe this side of the room and we'll talk about what's going on on this wall here uh, and this kit. And I'm going to run through all the drums and everything else in the room. So let's check out the kit over here. All right, so this is a really cool wall. This goes from the floor all the way up to the ceiling, and this is about a 20 foot long wall. This is a product from Audimute called Strata, Cityscape Strata, I believe is the name. And as you can hear probably from my mic, it's very dead and very clean in here. The only things you're gonna be here ringing are cymbals or drums, um, which is, kind of the whole point. Before I built this out and it was all sheetrock, you can see a video uh, that I did on the build out of this spot and I played drums in here. It sounded like a stadium. 
there was so much reverb and weird frequencies happening, you really couldn't tell what was happening. It was just, it sounded gigantic, but if you wanted a nice controlled sound for a songwriter album, you couldn't get it in that room. No way. So that's what this is. This is really, really cool looking as well, but it really, when we put this wall up in about, it took about an afternoon. We started in the morning and finished around noon. Um, it was incredible just putting up this wall, how much it changed the sound of the room. Um, okay, so let's just get to some gear. I'm gonna just talk about what's ever in the frame, I'm gonna talk about the gear. So, uh, these are 15 inch Signature Agop hi-hats. Love these. Um, this is the new classic hardware that you'll see in all the videos. Uh, this stuff just got released recently. Um, I've been using it for probably about a year and a half. They sent me some early prototypes of it for my uh, opinion, and I said everything is amazing. I wouldn't change anything. So this stuff is great. This is a 5x14 Jazz Fest reissue. Really great drum. Um, this is a Speed Flyer kick drum pedal. Uh, it's their new modern pedal I love. This kit I got on Reverb. Uh, I sold my Red Sparkle kit, which I never loved that color. Um, it's a cool kit, but I sold it to get this. Uh, this is a 1966 uh, Club Date 12, 14, 20. Love these drums. I just love old drums. Uh, it just gives you a different vibe than the new stuff. And I also have a bunch of new drums, which I'll show in a second. They're just different tools for different jobs. Uh, this is an Exist 22 inch uh, dry dark ride, which is very Dijonet kind of. So I don't know if this microphone will be able to handle the voice and the drums, but let's see. Kind of a very open sounding typical kit. That's this area. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna grab everything around me. These are 12 inch traditional mini hats from Agop. And these are cool. Let's, uh, let's take these off. You can hear these real quick. This is just gonna be a very down and dirty kind of quick video. Just kind of showing what's in here. Very different sound. Really cool hats. And what do we got here? We got a 14 by 13 classic maple floor tom, black sable finish. And then we also got the uh, 12, 13 toms there. Uh, let's turn the camera this way. This is where most of the drums and roads and stuff is. Um, and we'll talk about all the gear over here. That's gonna take a minute, so let's check that out. Okay, so what we got going on over here, this is a 73 Rhodes. Uh, this is on permanent loan from my good buddy, Ted Baker, uh, who I used to play Lion King with all the time. Um, Ted, if you know, played keyboards with Steely Dan. Um, and let me sit here. And uh, so this, he didn't have room for this when I was hanging at his house one day, his apartment in the city. This was in his kitchen. And if you've been in New York, some of the kitchens are really small. So this was in his kitchen because it was the only place he had room for it. And I said, man, that's amazing you got this thing in here. He said, man, I want to get this out of my house. Can you hold on to it for me until I you know, need it back? I said, yeah, I'd love to. Thank you. So I drove in the city, loaded it in my car, um, and it's been living here. And he said, you can never fuck with it. You can't loan it to anybody. And I said, okay, that's, you know, no worries. I wouldn't do that. And he said, this was the rose that was on tour with Steely Dan. Uh, I believe it was the Two Against Nature tour. Um, and so Fagin even played this on stage. So this is a very cool Rhodes. Um, I am not a great keyboard player, but I definitely sit and try to write on this as often as I can. Now on top of this is a very cool kind of prized possession of mine. This is, um, this is a 1951, I believe they said, Martin Tenor guitar that was my grandfather's. Um, and I actually have a picture of him playing it over there that I'll show in a little bit. 
Um, this is a four string tenor guitar. Uh, it's mahogany back and sides and a Sitka spruce top and a Brazilian bridge and headstock. And this is just an amazing, cool instrument, mostly because it was my grandfather's, but it also sounds incredible. And I wrote a song on my last uh, record, Travelers, particularly with this instrument, kind of a dedication to my grandfather. Um, and we didn't know we had this in our house. I was, uh, this is at my mom's house and we were cleaning out some stuff under the basement and this case, this alligator case, I remember seeing, but I always thought it was empty. And I opened it one day and found this and was like, holy shit. So I had um, one of Charlie Hunter's guys uh, fix it up and get it all dialed in. And that's a really, really cool instrument. Um, what else? This is like uh, all of the shakers and doodads and just weird, you know, things that I have over here. This is all different sounding shakers. Uh, I've got these things. What a wonderful world. Um, you know, book, New Breed. If you've never used New Breed, go through it. It's an incredible book. It's hard. Um, so yeah, just weird, just all sorts of doodads in here, maracas, you know, bells. This is a, a morph beat bell from Adam Morford. Very cool. There's a big one here. Um, just all sorts of stuff. This is very cool. So very cool sounds out of that. Um, this is just a weird setup. Uh, I'll just name the drums. Sometimes I'll have a normal kit set up here, and then over here I'll have some different stuff. This is a, uh, a Ludwig standard, uh, I think it's the Lemon Strata uh, concert tom. And I just have an orchestral Evans head. And it just kind of sounds like a tum I have it tuned up like a, tum a timbale. Um, and this you can also detune. There's a, there's a video, I think, of me using it really low and it sounds like a kick drum. So that's a very cool, uh, cool instrument. This is an old uh, WFL 24 by 14 uh, vintage drum that I got at, uh, I think it was the Delaware Drum Show. It was a clinic I did right before COVID started. So I left, bought that there. Um, we've got an old AKG D112 vintage down here. I don't know if you can see that. Nope, oh, don't want that to fall over. Uh, so that's the old classic D112. Uh, that's a really cool microphone, kind of a classic. You'd see that used on a lot of old jazz recordings. They'd put that in front of a tenor, sax, or you know, horns, on drums, on bass cabinets, whatever. Um, back here, let's move this, is the... Uh, this is a um, this is an old WFL. Sorry to turn my back on you all. This is an old WFL um, kit in the pearl essence finish. It's 13, 16, 22. You've probably seen this in a bunch of videos. These are incredible. It also is the interior looks brand new, and it's a cool kit because it's got double mufflers. It's got um, mufflers on the top and the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. So they were telling me it was probably a custom ordered kit. Um, and I believe this is late 40s, like 49 or 50. Um, so really cool. So I found that guy on Craigslist a few years ago. I've got a uh, kind of a matching snare with that. It's got the nickel hardware. Um, really cool story about this drum, a fan uh, actually gave this to me, which was, in, I couldn't, my jaw kind of hit the floor and he said, I know you have that kit that this is a match to and you don't have the snare and I'd love for you to have it. I don't use it that much and I'd love to hear you play it. Uh, so it's a thank you gift from me to you. And I, I you know, when, when stuff like that happens, it, it does make you realize there's some really incredible people out there. Um, there's also some very crabby, uptight people out there, but you gotta kinda put that stuff in the back seat and, and take those moments and go, you know what, this is pretty amazing. 
Um, and it's a great drum. It sounds incredible. There's, there's definitely clips of me playing it. There's a demo of it. Um, so let's all scoot this over now and pan over here so you can see. I'll go through all the snare drums I kind of keep up here and over in this corner are miscellaneous drums. So let's, uh, let's point over here. Okay, so this is where I keep most of the drums. Um, so we'll just start along the top here. So the, this first one, and there's demos of all of these you can see on my YouTube, on the channel here. The first one's a six and a half Carpathian Elm. That was a limited edition that um, Ludwig did. I think they did 50 of those. They sent me that one. That's actually the one that's in the catalog photos. Um, they sent this one to me to do um, a demo of. So, you know, there's a demo of that on my page. That's really cool drum. Very round edges, uh, thick shell, and it's actually maple, elm, maple. So there's actually, they're using this elm in between every other ply. So it's not just a maple shell wrapped with one veneer, it's actual elm. Then we've got the uh, Copper Phonic, six and a half by 14. That's an amazing drum, one of my favorite snares. Uh, then we've got a, a six lug Pioneer, green gold duco. Very cool drum. I just love those old duco finishes. Then we've got the Gold Sparkle Pioneer that went with this kit. So that, I mean, that drum looks brand new. It's incredible. I think it's a 66. Uh, then this is a uh, blue and kind of gray Duco snare shell that I found. It had a paint flaw in it, which still looked perfect to me at the Ludwig factory. And I said, why are you guys tossing this? And they said, oh, there's a paint flaw. I was like, man, that's such a waste. Can I, can I grab it? And they were like, yeah, sure. So I grabbed it, I drilled holes in it. There were already bearing edges on it. Um, and I threw some hoops and a throw off and I hand sanded a, um, a, a small snare bed. And that's just a maple poplar uh, shell that sounds incredible. That's a really cool drum. I actually was really happy the way that ended up. Then we have a five and a half, five or five and a half, I forget what it is, a Pioneer snare. So that's an old Ludwig. Then we have a, that's an eight lug. Then this is a six lug. Uh, old Ludwig, like from the late 20s, with two lugs, uh, non-original nickel hoops, and that's like three and a half by 14. That's an incredible drum. It sounds great up, as you would expect, but at, for a really thin drum, it sounds amazing tuned very low. Uh, then we've got a Pioneer six and a half by 14, same model as the five, just six and a half. Uh, then we've got the original Acrylite. Uh, I'll pull this one down so you can see. I did a demo of this, but so this has that kind of funky finish um, on it. And so these were kind of like called, they're not known as, they're known as the prototype. They weren't actually the prototype. They only made these for about a year, I think. Uh, I don't even know if this is dated. Yeah, I don't even think there's a date stamped in this. Um, so it's a different design than the, the later Acrylites, um, but that's, that's an incredible snare. And it has all um, aluminum lugs and hoops. So it's very, very light. It's got a very cool sound. And then we've got another red and gold Duco Pioneer over there. Uh, symbols that are up here real quick. That's just all the snares up there. This is a 30th anniversary 26-inch uh, uh, Agop. That's amazing. That's a really amazing symbol. Uh, Agop 17 inch dry dark hats. Got a 16 by 14 deep classic maple shell floor tom. Got a 12 by 18 classic maple kick. Here's the 10 that goes with that. This is a 10 inch uh, classic maple in the black sable finish. This is just like a classy kind of, you could do a pop gig, a hip hop gig, a classical gig. You could, I mean, that finish that they make is incredible. Uh, then under that, we've got my, this is the first kit I got from Ludwig when I signed with Ludwig. This is the uh, Heritage Green. Um, this is the Legacy Maple. So that's 12, 14, 16, 20. That's kind of a do-it-all kind of kit. Really love these. Uh, they're a little warmer, I would say, and a little less resonant than the Classic Maples. But depending on how you're tuning or what you're playing, they can kind of do anything. Here's the 22 that goes with that. It's got a towel in it. 
and a, uh, what is this, an EQ3 with a hole in it on the front. Great, great kick drum. Uh, what do we got here? This is a prototype that I did collaboration with Noble and Cooley on and Ludwig. It's a solid walnut shell with um, tulip re-rings, 7x14, and then I did Ludwig um, the claw hoops and uh, my favorite throw off. And that is a prototype for maybe a future project. We will see how that goes. So that can go there. Uh, back to here with some more drums. This is a 15 by six and a half Ludwig that my friend Sammy Marandino loaned me. Very cool drum. Got some Kashishis here. These are great. Those are cool. This is the only cowbell I own. I don't even know which one this is. It says the best cowbell ever. So, and I have it stuffed because otherwise it rings forever. That's an LP something or other. There you go. Uh, we got a 17 inch bass drum here. Uh, that used to be an old tenor snare marching drum that I turned into a kick drum. We've got this amazing tabla drum that I used to study tabla for about three years when I was living in Colorado with this guy Ty Burho, who uh, is Zakir, is one of Zakir's main students. And I have kind of larger hands, and when I was studying with him, he said, you know, we need to get you a little bit larger drum. And uh, he goes, I have one, but you have to promise me if you ever sell it, you have to call me and sell it back to me. And I said, okay, why? What's the story there? He said, well, this is one of Zakir's drums. So I kind of was like, holy shit, um, I don't know if I should even be playing that. And he's like, no, 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 it's all good. Um, so that is a pretty incredible drum to have, knowing that that was one of his. We got a parade drum down here. That's like an old, it's like 60s, not super old. Uh, it's, I think it's 8, 8 by 14. We got a, a, an aluminum sugar snare here from Jefferson over at Sugar Percussion. Beautiful drum. Aluminum, uh, I want to say it's 4x14. Then just running down the bottom here, we've got a Superphonic, new, new Ludwig Superphonic, 6.5. Uh, raw Brass, 6.5 from Ludwig, brand new. Then we've got a Craviato. Uh, this is a solid walnut drum that actually Johnny gave me as a gift in 2001. Uh, he sent this a 10 lug solid walnut with walnut re rings incredible drum. Johnny was a super great guy, wild dude, a uh, really sweet guy, loved his drums and sent me that as a gift, which was very cool. So I will always keep that drum, of course. And then I have another two sugars. One is a prototype, like a hundred vertical ply snare, which is kind of bizarre and sounds awesome. And then I've got a regular poplar uh, sugar that Jefferson did in a trade that I did with him uh, for a little video demo a while ago uh, and basically he did all these different colors of snares for sale and he said all right let me know what color you want and I said I want all of the colors so I, I said can you do like a big fat vertical stripe of each color and so he did a really great job the inside of this drum is all painted all the way around so that's a very unique cool cool very cool drum and it sounds really good. Jefferson makes some great stuff. Uh, what else we got here? This is an old six lug uh, solid um, mahogany uh, universal snare from Ludwig. That's really old. Sounds great. Very dry. And then this is one of my prized possessions. This is a 1940, I forget early 40s Ludwig, uh, solid solid walnut, or sorry, solid mahogany, uh, that looks brand new. I mean, this drum is in incredible shape. I got it from a guy who, who was the student of the original purchaser. His teacher bought this new and only used it on classical gigs. Um, and it comes with a huge case. 
uh, that's like pur purple velvet lined. This is an incredible time capsule of a drum uh, that I'm very happy to kind of be the custodian of for the time being. And we got uh, my 18 uh, kick. My friend Corey painted the head. I'm a big fan of Le Chouf beer. And so that's the bottle cap. And I sent him that and instead of saying Le Chouf, it says McLean on the flag, which is kind of kind of rad. He's he's a really talented dude. Um, as we're over here, these are Steger. Uh, these are the S SR2N ribbon mics. I have a stereo pair of these that I like. Usually I'll just do like for this is mono overhead kick, but I did have a stereo pair for a different setup. Uh, let's talk about cymbals real quick. I'll run through the cymbals I have. All right, I'm just gonna blow through these. Uh, I'm not gonna play through all these because I already did a cymbal demo of all this. 20 inch jazz, uh, traditional jazz agop with uh, three rivets. Uh, we've got a Mel Lewis 21. I took all the rivets out. We've got a 22 30th anniversary heavier ride. It's a little heavier than the normal ones. This is a 22 medium sig, which is a great symbol. We've got a 22 Idris Muhammad with, oh, there they go, with uh, two rivets. There's also a lot of weight of uh, material. This is a 23, no, oh, I'm sorry, 20, no, it's a 23 sig ride. That's a very thin symbol. Uh, we got an old 24 Matt Chamberlain and then a 24 uh, Joey Warnaker. That's that. Then we have a 20 inch China SIG. Those are incredible. Love those. Uh, this is a 22 uh, traditional jazz agop with one rivet. Also, also amazing. Then we have traditional 17 inch thin crash. This might be the only cr actual just crash that I own. Also just bonkers how good these are. Uh, 19 inch ion dark trash. It's like very obviously trashy and uh, quick decay. This is a 19 inch dry dark ride exist. Uh, this is very much like a Steve Gadd clone ride. It's got a great belt, super dry. I even put a little piece of tape to dry it out even more. That records incredibly well. And it's also a 19, which is dope. It's nice and small. This is, a, this is one of the first, um, this is the first uh, Agop that I bought. I bought this and another 22. Uh, this is a 20 inch 30th anniversary that I put three rivets in. And I paid $476 for this probably nine years ago. Uh, it's 1,774 grams. So there's that, that's a great symbol. I use that a lot. Then we have a, uh, a GOP trash hit 20. That's just fucking badass symbol. Those are really cool. Got a 20 inch dry dark crash exist. Also gorgeous, I use that as a second side ride usually. Um, this is one of my favorites, a 20 inch SIG. Put one rivet in. That's an amazing symbol. It's 1430 grams and as you can see, I could bend that in half like a taco. Very thin. Uh, this is the prototype for the dry darks that came out they sent. Sounds awesome. I used that on Seth Meyers and put a little crack in it because I was I think, a little too excited for the show and broke it. Um, this is a, my first uh, 20 inch SIG China with three rivets. And this is probably the most used China I have. I cracked it again, brought it to late night with Seth Meyers, was wailing the shit out of it, and I cracked it. But I drilled the holes out, it sounds great. It's a China, so it should sound kind of fucked up. And then a 22 inch China SIG with three rivets that you can use as like a ride uh, or a China or whatever you want. So those are the symbols here. Let's, uh, let's go to hi-hats. All right, well quickly, I put all my hi-hats in this bag. Um, this is a cool bag. 
uh, leather bag I've had for a long time. Uh, the company is called CAC Sack. C A C S A K. What do we got here? This is a Turk Splash. Uh, I use this, this is a 12. I use this as a hi hat top. Um, then we've got the, the original, only to be copied by every cymbal manufacturer on the planet lately, uh, clap stack with all the different sizes. Very cool. And now everybody has copied it exactly, which is kind of whack. Um, here's the Exist 10 inch dry dark hat. Very cool hats. Uh, 13 inch dry hats. I'm just gonna pull out the tops. These are 14 inch traditional jazz hats. Very cool, heavier weight, but beautiful sounding. Uh, like I was showing before, this is the 15 inch signature hi-hat. Uh, then we've got 15 inch, oh, these are heavy. I should break, break these out more. These are the Turk uh, 15s. Really cool, heavier kind of for like the super tight funk. Um, we've got, oh, 15 inch traditional medium hats which are fantastic. Oh wait, hold on. Uh, that's uh, an older hat that I use uh, that they don't make anymore. Um, what else do we got here? My classic 15 inch 30th anniversary hats. Love those. If I was gonna use like one set, it might be this. Those are just buttery. Then a 16 inch version of those, which are great uh, for a lot of different reasons, but they're heavier. So you could use those on a rock gig. Um, depending on how you play it, you can use it on a songwriter gig, but very nice low pitch. Oh, then there's a 20 inch dry dark flat ride in the back. Uh, and that's it for that bag. So those are the hi-hats. I showed you some hi-hats earlier. The, uh, um, the 12s are over there. I think that's all the symbols. Now let's get into this world. I'll just, this is where I organize all my cables and doodads. So let's check that out. All right, so this is where I store a lot of this, you know, drummers we have stuff. Cables go here, uh, microphones, let's go through my microphones. SR25 Earthworks, I have three of these. Use them as overhead, use them on anything. They're incredible. Uh, these are some old school uh, Shure uh, PE54D Unidyne 3 dynamic mic. It's basically the first 57s that were made. These are dope. They're a little more clear. They have better high end. I have two, sorry, I have three of those. Those are incredible. Uh, we've got a AKG D12 VR. That's a great modern kick drum mic. It's got different settings if you want a little more high end scooped mids and a little more low boost. Um, those are very cool. Uh, we've got a classic uh, AKG C414. Also a beautiful microphone. Uh, kind of can do anything with that. Uh, we've got my stack of signature sticks uh, here, so I have enough of that. Uh, we've got beaters of all shapes and sizes down here. Uh, got like stuff from Lowboy, which is incredible. They make some beautiful stuff. Uh, Ludwig stuff. Um, some custom stuff from Cherry Hill. They made me some beaters that I wanted to try out. This one's very interesting. It's a solid, I think it's rosewood. Uh, kind of small beater that's really cool. Get, get a nice click sound out of that. Um, this is kind of where I put a lot of my towels. Uh, little, you know, keys, hi-hat clutches. Uh, shout out to Paul Reed Smith. This is the uh, John, John Mayer um, uh, Strat. Really great guitar. Um, I met Paul when I was at Sweetwater when we were at the airport and we started talking. Super nice dude. Uh, I called him and said, I just want one electric guitar. What should I check out? And he said, the Strat. So I bought that and it's uh, really beautiful. So this is my stack of Dave Deming fan brushes and stuff over here. I've got, um, I've got my scale that uh, a fan ended up sending me because he wanted to know specific weights of my symbols. I said, man, I don't have a way to, um, I don't have a way to weigh it. Here's a double, double way. And uh, so he sent me that. And so now I know all the weights of uh, all the symbols. Uh, what else? We got some more microphone boxes down there. Um, I've got this. 
this is a briefcase uh, that um, when I started working with Earthworks, they sent me this, which is pretty badass. Um, I will actually just grab the camera off of here. Please excuse the uh, crazy filming. Um, so these are all the uh, close mics uh, that they make. So there's this briefcase uh, to kind of do what you want. You kind of look like an assassin when you show up at a gig with that. So that's very cool. And I'll just do this by hand so you can kind of see through uh, all this stuff. So just, you know, doodads, you know, you got to have a shelf and that's just like an Ikea. I've had that shelf forever. Um, so that's that. And then as far as mics go, you can kind of see, put that guy there, mono overhead, very simple. Um, oh, and I also have a Stager over here that I, I mic'd up on this kick drum. That's also a very cool uh, ribbon mic that they got going. Um, this is the kind of weird setup I'm working on these days. Uh, what else? I think that's it, everybody. So that's the studio. That's what I have going. Oh, here's an old uh, Ludwig Tom with the uh, skin. Uh, natural bottom which is cool there's a Lion King thing thing my buddy Creighton did for me as a gift Creighton Barrett from Band of Horses he's a good buddy really cool artist a thing from Rent when I was doing the uh, off-Broadway show Rent that's a very cool thing uh, that Mitch from Audi Mute did that's the schematic for my drumstick and he made a sound panel out of it which is very hip I also have some panels on the ceiling which you can see that they made. That makes a huge difference. Um, these are old barn beams uh, from Pennsylvania that we had in our kitchen. And we had enough left, almost within, I'm not kidding, an inch, uh, that we had enough for that one. And then this one up here. And I don't know if you can see, but there is a uh, Earthworks Omni uh, there and also over there that I leave set up all the time. So that is the tour of the studio. Hopefully that uh, either answers some questions or it was just fun to watch. So thanks for running around in here with me. And I hope you all have a great day or evening wherever you're at. Thanks for watching.